Hey guys, welcome to another Flutter tutorial. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be looking at the Path Provider plugin and we're going to be looking at future builders and a few other things. Path Provider is a pretty handy plugin for Flutter. This Path Provider allows us a platform agnostic way to read and write files to a device's file system. This makes it fairly easy for us to store information in our application. All right, so you guys will probably notice that I've already written out a few bits of boilerplate in this application. We've got our main function, then we've got our root widget. It's just a stateless widget with a build function that creates a material app and then points to our home stateful widget. And then we've got the home stateful widget, which then points to a home state widget, which has a build function that creates a scaffold. We also want to go into our pubspec YAML and add path provider. At the time of this video, the version number is 0.4, so that's the version I'm going to be using. The basic idea behind this particular application that we're about to write is that we want to have a text box, which we can put text in, and then that text will be written into a file, and then we'll be able to access that file and reprint it out to the screen. We also want to be able to get the directory where that file is being stored, and we want to print that out to the screen. To make this application, we need to make a few imports. We want to make an import on Dart.io, which is the input output reader. We need a sync. We need, of course, our path provider plugin. And we want to get Flutter Foundation. Flutter Foundation is essentially a namespace that allows us to gain access to some of the core primitives of the Flutter framework. So the way I like to think about it is a library that gives us access to the building blocks that create Flutter. We want to create a class called storage and this class will hold all of the getters and setters that we'll need to read and write to our file. First, we wanna create a getter function that will get the local path. And this is asynchronous, so it passes back a future. We say final dir, which is our directory, await, get application documents directory. And then we want to return dir.path, which is the actual physical path for this documents directory. On iOS, the documents directory is called NS documents directory. And then in Android, I think it's just called the documents directory. So this would work both on iOS and on Android, and it would give us the path to where we're going to write our file. We can then create a getter for a local file. This is also a sync, and it returns a feature with a file inside of it rather than a feature with a string. Final path equals await, and we want to get our local path, and then we're going to return a file with the path and then the name db.txt attached to the front of it. Now we can create a function that will read the data from that file. And for this function, we'll use a try catch block just in case it returns an exception. We want to get our file, so we just use the getter that we just created. And of course, we need to wait on that because it's a future. And then we can use the method read as string on our file to get all of the contents or the body of the file and then read it into our variable body, which is just a string. And then of course, we can just return the body variable. And then for the catch area, we can just take our exception, convert it into a string, and then return it. We also want to create a function that will allow us to write data to the file. For this one, we do like we did before. We call our local file getter method to get the file. And then we'll just return calling the method write a string with the data that we're passing into this function on our file and this will return a future with a file in it. All right, so now we have the ability to get the local path, get the local file, read the data, and write the data. Now let's implement this into our application. Inside of our stateful widget home, we can create a final storage variable called storage, and then we can take the constructor and we can have it so that we pass the storage into this particular class when we instantiate it. So we can say key, key, and then we can say this dot storage. And then of course we 
pass the key into the super constructor. Now there is one more thing that I added to this particular constructor that I haven't really shown you guys in the past and that is a bit of meta programming. This keyword called required forces it so that the application will expect that this field has to be filled out. When I create the home instance up here you'll see now it's throwing back this warning saying that the parameter storage is required. And of course to fix the warning we can just instantiate a new storage and put it in for the field storage. We can then create three global variables for our home state class. We need to create a text editing controller. We need to create a string to hold our state. And we want to create a future to hold our directory path so that we can then display it to the screen. Now we can override the init state function. And we can access our storage from the home class by calling widget.storage. And then of course we can access the methods on this storage. So first we call read data. And if you remember our read data function returns a future string. So we can then use this then method which allows us to take the string out of the future and then pass it into this anonymous callback function. And we can simply set state equal to the value. And this will make it so that we're just reading it right out of our file and putting it into our state variable. Now let's build out the layout a little bit. We'll add an app bar to our scaffold and then the body will be a center and we'll put a column inside of that. And our column in here will have the displays, our edit field, and our buttons. We can create a text first. And the field inside of the text will just be us checking to see if state is null. And if it is null, then we'll print out file is empty. Otherwise, we'll print out our state. Below it, we want to have our text field. And we want to link this up with our controller, so we just pass in controller. And then below that we want to have a raised button that has the text of write to file on it. And then the on pressed will be a function that we'll create here that will allow us to write our state into a file. Our function will be called write data and it will be asynchronous. It will return a future file. And the first thing we want to do inside of it is call set state. And we want to take our controller.txt and put it into our state. And then we want to take controller.txt and set it equal to an empty string. And then after all of this, we will return data with the state inside of it. And then this will write the new state into our file. So now we can come down to our onPressed here and we can enter in write data instead of our anonymous function. We should be able to run this application in our emulator and take a look at the functionality that we just implemented. Here's our application and you can see we're actually getting an exception back and that's because the file doesn't currently exist. However, if we do write something into the file and we click the button, then the exception will go away and it will then display the string that we wrote into the file. And I can write a longer string if I want, something like this is in the database. And when I click write to file, now that displays in our display screen. Now let's make it so that we can see the directory where this file resides. To do that, we want to come below our raised button here and create another raised button. And in this raised button, we'll have some text that will say get the directory path. And then our onPressed function will actually get that directory path for us. Let's build out that function. I'm just going to call it get app directory, and this will be a synchronous void function. And all we really have to do in here is call set state, and then call the get applications documents directory function and pass its result into our application document directory variable. We can then come back down to our button and put this in for the onPressed function. And so this will allow us to put the string into our variable. However, we do not have any ability to actually view the string yet. So let's create our future builder now. A future builder is sort of like a list view in some ways. It allows us to essentially snapshot a future and based on the state of that future, we can then change the widget. 
So we need to put in a property called future that points to the specific future state that we want to look at, and that is our app doc dir variable. And remember that the function that we just created isn't actually returning a string, it's just returning what's called a directory. And then we want to fill out our builder property with an anonymous function that takes in our build context and then the asynchronous snapshot of our directory, which we'll call snapshot. We can then create a simple text variable, which matches up with an empty text widget. And then we can run an if statement to see what the state of our snapshot is. First, we wanna run an if check to see if the connection state of our snapshot is connections done. In other words, either our asynchronous function has received the data or it's received an error of some kind. So we first want to check the error case. And if our snapshot has an error, we can then take our text and set it equal to a new text widget that has the error inside of it. If our snapshot has data though, we can then create another text widget, this time with our snapshot.data.path in it. So this will be a string representation of the path where this particular file is residing. And we need to add another else clause, and this will just check to see if another state is occurring for whatever reason. And we'll just pass back a text widget that says unavailable. And let me actually spell unavailable correctly. Now that we've created our text widget, we need to return a widget from this function that will be shown when the various things happen to our snapshot. And the widget that we'll return will be a simple container with a child of our text widget. You can see here, now we have our two buttons, and even though they're right on top of one another, they should work properly. So now we can click get dir path, and we get our path. So it says path data user zero com dot example dot local storage example backslash app flutter. This part of the path here, this data user zero, is the part that's open to everything. And then the com example, local storage example, is the application name. And then the app flutter is the flutter layer of the application. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike the video, then by all means, download it as much as you like. Have a good night.